problem that falls into the category of momentum conservation. Specifically, we would categorize it as an explosion type, meaning two things start together, and then after the explosion, they're moving apart. The problem goes like this. A two kilogram model rocket is launched, expelling 60 grams of burned fuel from its exhaust at a speed of 500 meters per second. What is the velocity of the rocket after the fuel has burned? We're going to ignore things like gravity and air resistance for the purposes of this problem. Now, I want a before and after picture. My method might seem overkill for what seems like kind of a simple problem, but this method, if you apply it to more difficult problems, will really help you through. So my method involves a before and after picture with all the information we can possibly find going right on that picture. So let's uh, set up beforehand and afterward. And beforehand, we have this rocket. And the fuel is actually inside of the rocket. So let me just do something like this to represent the fuel inside of the rocket. So this is the forehand, nothing's moving, it's just waiting to launch. Afterward, we know the rocket is moving upward. As the bush line to the rocket. And we know that the fuel has um, been expelled, has been pushed downward. So I'll just let this represent the fuel, and presumably since it's less mass than the rocket, it's going faster in the other direction. We've got rocket and fuel moving apart afterward, and rocket and fuel together not moving, in this case, beforehand. So I want to put all the numbers I possibly can on my picture. I want to notate masses and velocities specifically. So beforehand, let's see the mass of the rocket itself is 2 kilograms, and the velocity of the rocket beforehand is 0 not moving. And the fuel on the inside, the mass is 60 grams, so we're going to have a mismatch here between kilograms and grams, so I'm just going to go ahead and convert that and keep it all in kilograms. So instead of 60 grams, we're going to write 0.06 kilograms. And the fuel to begin with, not moving either. That's all beforehand. Afterwards, it's another story. The mass hasn't changed. The rocket is still 2 kilograms. The fuel is still 0.06 kilograms. But now the velocities are quite different from zero. The rocket is moving upward, and we're curious what that velocity of the rocket is afterwards. That's our question. And the fuel is moving downwards. I should really call that a negative velocity. And it's 500 meters per second. Before, this is the situation afterward. Since we've accounted for everything and there's no outside forces, then we can say that momentum is conserved. Whatever total momentum we start with in this picture, we're going to have the same total momentum in that picture. As long as we account for everything, there's no outside forces. So I can go ahead and write that the momentum total beforehand, P total before, all the momentum you can possibly find in this picture is equal to P total after all the momentum you can possibly find in this picture. And so we're just going to say the momentum of everything in this picture added up is the momentum of everything in this picture added up. And momentum, remember, is mass times velocity. So in this picture, we've got two things. We've got the rocket and the fuel. And so we're going to worry about the momentum of the rocket beforehand and the momentum of the fuel beforehand. And so for the rocket, let's see, mass times velocity. If mass is 2, its velocity is 2. For the fuel, mass times velocity, its mass is 0.06. Its velocity is 0. Okay, so basically we've got no momentum before. Which means, I know this seems weird, that there's going to be no total momentum afterward. How could that work out? Well, you have one thing with the positive momentum and another thing with the negative momentum. But let's see that in action. So we have to say that's equal to the momentum afterward. Afterward, the rocket has momentum, as does the fuel. The rocket's momentum is its mass times velocity. We don't know the velocity, but its mass times whatever that velocity of the rocket afterward is. And that's one thing in the picture. And we have to add the momentum to the other picture thing in the picture. And that's the fuel. So we're going to add the momentum to the fuel. The fuel's momentum is its mass times its velocity. In other words, the fuel has the momentum of 300 downward. And to 
can see that if this whole left side is zero, then this right side has to add up to zero also. So basically, we're seeing that the momentum of the racket is 300 and upward. And then you can use the racket's momentum to solve for its velocity. So again, it's a little bit of overkill for this particular problem, but the problem strategy that I like for any momentum conservation problem is to draw a before picture, to draw an after picture, to find the momentum of everything in the before picture, and set that equal to the momentum of everything added up in the after picture. And that problem-solving strategy will take you a long way. Good luck.